Now let's just remember, this is only a 3,000 line exchange. Just imagine what it must have sounded like in some of the big city exchanges where nearly 20,000 lines occupied a single room. Perhaps the most significant part of a step-by-step -step exchange was not necessarily the equipment but the people who maintained it. Every day a veritable army of employees of the old post office, which later became Telecom and is now known as Telstra, would slave away maintaining and keeping this equipment in running order. These skills are now almost totally forgotten. Here at Guildford, a relay set is maintained and serviced before placing it back into the rack and testing it with the routiner. That's just the spacing between the contacts. I've taken the tension on the screens. And what's that particular relay set you're working on there? This is, this is the control relay set for the uh, short routine for the final selectors. The final selector rapid tester is the full relay. Banks have to be cleaned every three years, the same time you oil and dag the switches. The only real labour intensive part of the work. It's got to be done because it's electromechanical. Now that's the, that's the plain tape you're using at the moment? Yeah, the clean tape. And then after you've done that, you use the oil to take. Yeah, it's got a little bit of oil just impregnated into it. That, that just leaves a fine coating of oil for lubrication, a, a conductive oil. And also, um, it stops any corrosion, if you will. That's another thing. It makes the wipers also go over the contacts a bit easier. There's not enough oil there to collect any dust. It's just a very fine smear of oil. And it just puts a light film, a light film on to stop any corrosion, helps in lubrication. The part so of the you, you started about yeah, I did that. A third the, the, the way reason, The reason being, the tape's the cleanest when I did it. Over there, that's the upper hundred and that's the lower hundred, and that's the private bank. Right, private so you bank, clean private bank last. Yeah, the private bank's not used for speeches. I was speaking on, it's only for, for busying and guarding. 
gobbling on the cello, just stepping, stepping on the oar switch. So it's the switch contacts where 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 the actual, where the actual speech part is. I make them the cleanest. Right. So they're not noisy. Whereas uh, the actual guarding, it doesn't matter as long as they're not clear they're they sound. And I realise operate or step over. Realise it's it is. Um, it doesn't matter. It's not actually a speaking circuit. And how many switches can you do without having to change the? Um, oh, one. Just one switch. Well, it's that, got it. a bit of dirt on there, see? Yep. That's over three years. Then I go over again with the oily tape, which I have. Um, remember, this is the oily tape. It looks just a slight da shade darker than the, the clean tape. I'm just. Uh, Putting a fresh slide of tape on the onto the on the ring sort of thing after I did my last switch to make it nice and tight. I'm doing doing the same thing now. Again, start with the uh, the upper 100 yeah. bank. Yeah, the upper yeah the upper bank yeah the upper 100 bank. Now the switch has relays in it which can select between the banks, doesn't it? Yeah, they, they discriminate. Well, that is HA and HV switching. I'll show you that in a second. That actually allows the switch to handle 200 lines. Yeah, yeah. On the, on the, so you can put double the switching on the rack. You can, by, by, um, by just putting an extra, by doubling the size of the bank, you've uh, increased the capacity of that rack to handle twice the traffic. Uh, by utilising uh, half the switches. Well, well, not really. Like, if you had the volume, if you had, if you had a high, if higher volume range of traffic going through, well, obviously you'll need more switches. But this is um, giving it more capacity. To speak, for speaking. I'll take a cover off the switch as I finish this thing, and I'll show you the the relays. Actually, the switch next, but I'll tell you where where it's switched. Because there's a call going through on my right, and there's a call going through on my left. I need the switches. Do you find they get belted by having your fingers on the bank like that? If, no. Uh, if the line just happens to be no, running at the time. No, no. I'm insulated here. This tape it doesn't conduct. It doesn't, it's not that good a conductor. This. Like the way it is now, I won't conduct this clock. Yeah. I actually go across the line there, at the lower. Actually, I, I, won't get, I won't get electrocuted in any way because of the, the, the contact, there's a contact on top and the contact below. You've got, you got to actually short out the two contacts. contacts. Yeah. Yes. No, no, no. I'll take the cover off the switch next to the one I was working on and give you an idea. Now this switch at the moment, by the relays that are operated, it's telling me it's switched to the upper 100 there because the HB is operated. Uh, and that's the only relay that's operated after the actual switching. HB relay, the impulsing relay which makes the selector go up, is not operated. The other two relays are control the timing of, of the stepping. And also cause the switch to rotate after the vertical vertical stepping has been completed. But as as the switch searches for an outlet while it's going in into the bank, if it sees the one that's free, it'll either see the first the lower bank it'll operate on first. If that's busy it'll, it'll operate it'll test the upper bank contact as well. It tests lower than upper. Sorry, it tests the up the lower hundred then the upper hundred. And if that's busy it goes on the next one and it goes test the lower one and the upper one. And that's all done by the contacts here. But that particular point there on the bank there, that, that's level O, that's the lower 100, that's the upper 100. That, that's bit, that, that particular tag's been chipped. But at the bottom of there, the bottom tag there, that's, that, that's the private for the lower 100. And, and the there. top is the private for the upper 100. Upper 100, right. Yeah. Now that's the lower 100 relay, HA, and that's the upper 100 relay. In this case, it's on the lower 100. Uh, it's about four in. Uh, uh, step to the to the bottom top, to the bottom to the bottom bank. And you can't see that well. Not that much light, but that's what it is. That switch is is in work is working now. The same as that switch is working too. But anyway, this is how you put the cover back onto a switch.
You've got to hook it on at the back, then you push it down. So when you take it off, it's the same thing. You lift it up. Otherwise, you can damage damage the covers or can damage the screen sets of the railway. Anyhow, that's that little thing. Anyhow, I'll show you how I put the switch in. Good. So I'll hook the switch on at the bottom there, drop it down, you make sure it's busy first too. So I'm just going to check to make sure the switch lines up with bank contacts. Actually I should retain this switch, which I'll do. It's 588A, A2. I'll start up my retainer and you'll see it. As you see the impulsing relay there. The switch is going up to level 9, so nine, it impulses 9 times. And after it finishes, um, uh, these two relays release. That causes it to start the, the rotating circuit. It will start rotating in by these contacts. Uh, and if it's a busy line, it will step over using those contacts. It will step over to the next free one. That's what causes the switch to drive. It's round in the bank.